So, Mark, let's do a proof together this time. Um, what do you What do you think looking at this proof? My God, it's a mess. Yeah. Well, let's see here. Uh, I do like starting off looking at smaller things. I don't see any way to immediately connect this with anything. Yeah. One thing though, if we got a premise that has a triple bar, and there's only one thing you can do with a triple bar, and that's equivalence. Yeah. So we know we're going to do equivalence on that. Mm -hmm. uh, let's do equivalence. Okay. Um, there's a couple versions. I kind of like the idea of using the one with the horseshoes. Okay. Let's, maybe we'll see in a second. Let's try. This is just a, an experiment. We'll see if it works. Mm -hmm. So. B, so P triple bar Q is equivalent to, and so may replace or be replaced by uh, P horseshoe Q and Q horseshoe P. And so that's equivalence on one. On, uh, one. All right. Yeah. That seemed like a good move because we could simplify either one of these. Yeah. If we simplify this one, we can then do implication on it. This. Yes, yes, this part, it, this is going to turn into this by implication, isn't it? All right, so then let's take B horseshoe G and bring it down by simplification off of 5. We can do that because the main connective of 5 is an ampersand. And then this, we see, is going to turn by implication into the antecedent of line 2. So line two is of the form P horseshoe Q. We would like to get that antecedent on a line by itself so that we could bring the Q part down. Wow, that's that's a gale force wind there, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, I'll have to hold. I'll have to hold this. You're gonna do that? All right. Okay. So well, I can write. Okay. We're better in the post office when it comes to braving weather for you people. Okay, so we're gonna do implication on this. When you do implication, in this case we're having a horseshoe change to a wedge. And we add a tilde to the antecedent and the right side, the consequence staying the same. Mm -hmm. And the reason we did that is so we could get this. Yep. So that we could do a modus ponens. So now we have modus ponens P, P horseshoe Q, and Mark's going to bring the Q part down. And Two and seven. P, P horseshoe Q, bring down the Q. So now we've brought the Q down, and this looks suspiciously like this. I've got an A to a not N. I've got a not A. If I'm thinking in terms of transforming these things and changing them around, and I'm thinking, you know, I could apply transposition to this and turn it into not E horseshoe A. You know, I could reverse order and, and negate each side and double negate and get not E horseshoe A. Double and I've got A to not N. So by hypothetical syllogism I could go from A to not I, I could go from E to not N. I say do it. And then the E to not N is interesting because it looks I've got an N and an E here. So it looks like it might have something to do with this. Yeah. So Okay. This is where another bungee cord would this help, is, isn't right, it? There we go. I can do it. All right. So let's do this. Let's do uh, transposition on three. I will reverse the order and add a tilde to each side. How's that? Transposition on three. The E and the A trade places, and I add a tilde to each side, and then I'm going to double negate and get rid of that double negative there. So that's double negative on 9. See what I did? I just removed the two tildes from the A. Hmm? Okay. Hmm. We're in the ballpark of getting the antecedent of line 4. Because at least we have the right to the 4. Where are we? Oh, I see. Well, we've got a modus ponens, a, a, a hypothetical here. Hypothetical. I've got not E to A. I've got A to not N. I want to get the E and the N together so I can work on this. So why don't we do hypothetical? We've got not E to A and then A to not N so we can get not E horseshoe not N by hypothetical syllogism on uh, 9, excuse me, on 8 and 10. Does that work? Let's see. 
So P to Q, Q to R, P to R. So we have got to manipulate this. What do you want to do with this? Because we want to somehow use this to get this. Okay. Well, I want an ampersand. There's no way I can go from a horseshoe to an ampersand. Right. But I can go from a horseshoe to a wedge. Yes. Implication. And then the Morgans sometimes allows me to go from a wedge to an ampersand. Right. Let's let's change that to a wedge using implication for, to get well, started. And, and let me throw in something okay. here. The well, uh, N comes before the E. Well, Why don't we transition? Trans sure. Yeah. Let's transpose this and turn it into N horseshoe E, first of all. So transposition on 11, what transposition does is the N and the E, the antecedent and the consequent trade places, and each one loses a tilde or gains a tilde in the process. Uh, that's one way to do transposition. So now we have N horseshoe E from, uh, what is it, 11 and 10. So we're, we're running out of space, so why don't we lift, oh, just keep it on there, but we'll lift it up. Then we'll keep going, how's that? Okay. 